Ashley, and I'm going to be your virtual tour guide today down in Cave of the Mouth. But along the way, we're going to see several cave formations. The first one being a stalactite. Now these stalactites, they hang tight to the ceiling as they grow down towards the ground. So that's an easy way to remember them. Stalactites hang tight to the ceiling. Their counterpart are called stalagmites, and they start on the ground and they grow up towards the ceiling. So stalagmites might reach the ceiling someday. And if you guys are ready, we're gonna go check out some of these formations. So come on. These are some of the formations that I just talked about. We've got stalactites on the ceiling that are pretty small, but we have these giant stalagmites here right along the cave trail. Now, how did these get here? And how did this cave form? Well, water from rain or melting snow soaked into the soil, and in the soil it bonded with carbon dioxide to create carbonic acid. Have you guys ever heard of carbonic acid before? Maybe some of you have, maybe some of you haven't. Well, we actually drink it all the time. It's just carbonated water, and it's in all of our pops, sodas, sparkling waters, our seltzers. And when you drink carbonic acid, it eats away at the calcium of your tooth to create a little cavity. That's why the dentist always says, don't drink soda. Well, as that carbonic acid is made naturally in the soil, it comes down through the nooks, crannies, and cracks in the limestone and slowly dissolves away the calcium of the rock, which then creates a cave. So this very cave formed exactly the same way that cavities form in your teeth. Pretty neat, huh? Let's go learn some more. So we learned how the cave formed, but how are we getting these formations? Well, that carbonic acid continues to drip into this cave today. And as it passes through the limestone that's above the cave, it slowly dissolves away the limestone and that water droplet picks up teeny tiny little crystals that they're super hard to see with the naked eye. And when that water droplet comes into the cave, it doesn't want to carry those crystals anymore. It wants to get rid of them. So if the water droplet hangs on the ceiling long enough, it'll leave those crystals behind and they build up over time to create our stalactites. But if it can't hang on the ceiling long enough, it drips to the floor, leaving the crystals behind, and they build up to create our stalagmites. So you can see in this particular area of the cave, it's really drippy. So the water is not hanging on the ceiling long enough to create our stalactites, and that's why we have such big stalagmites. It's really cool. Now these crystals are so teeny tiny that it takes about 250 years to create one inch of cave formation. That's about the size of a marshmallow. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine how long this took? We estimate our cave to be about one to two million years old, which is so awesome to be down inside the Earth's history right now. And a fun fact, your hair grows more in six hours than this cave will grow in one entire year. Yeah, think about that. So right behind me here, this is the bottom of a sinkhole. Have you guys ever heard of a sinkhole before? Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's when a cave forms underground, but it forms a little bit too close to the surface. And so if my arms are a cave, at the very top, it's getting stretched a little too thin, the surface and the ceiling can't support itself anymore, so it sinks in. So above ground, you get this big bowl-shaped depression, and below ground in the cave, you get a big pile of rocks that we like to call a collapse. Now, that probably doesn't make you feel um, very safe about going in a cave when I say the word collapse, but this has happened so long ago that it's completely done shifting and moving. We don't need to worry about it anymore, and we wouldn't take people down in the cave if it wasn't safe. But we get to see the remains of this sinkhole, which is so neat. Let's talk about some other cool cave formations that happened down here. If you guys look up on the ceiling, what look like tree roots coming down, those are not tree roots. That's actually a cave formation called a ribbon stalactite. And so that water is dripping in, and remember it's carrying crystals, but instead of dripping straight down, the angle of the ceiling is just right, but the water is actually trailing down the ceiling, leaving a line of crystals behind. 
and it builds up over time to create what looks like ribbon glued to the ceiling. But cavers who come down in caves and they're exploring for long hours and it's grueling work, they look like they look at that and they say, man, that reminds me of my favorite breakfast food. I'm so hungry right now. So what do you think they nicknamed it? Can anybody guess? It starts with a B and it ends in Aiken. They called it Cave Bacon because it looks like bacon glued to the ceiling. So I don't recommend eating it. it tastes like a rock. And it's a really cool formation that we get to see. But now do you guys see what look like applesauce spilled over all these rocks? This is a cave formation called flowstone, and it's one of my favorites because it's a rock that's created from flowing water. Now, as the water trickles in, there's a little pool of water up at the top, and every once in a while it gets too full, and it overflows its edges and it trickles down. And as that water trickles down, it leaves those crystals behind, and they build up over time to create this blanket of rock over everything else. So we call it flowstone because not only is it created by flowing water, but it also happens to look like flowing water. If you look at it, it kind of looks like a frozen waterfall, which is really cool. And we're going to see more of that as we go along the tour. So right here, this is what we call the painted waterfall. And we're seeing more of that flowstone that I just talked about. But another cool thing about this is, this is another sinkhole. And if you were on the surface, it would have been a bowl-shaped depression, but below ground is a big pile of rocks. And this happened so long ago that flowstone was able to come in and form over all these rocks. And remember, it takes 250 years to create one inch of formation. And this is covered in a very thick layer of flowstone. So this happened an extremely long time ago, and we know that it's completely done shifting and moving, and it's settled. Now, if you look up here and over to the right, you're going to see what look like little white icicles coming down. These are soda straw stalactites. And when I say that, I kind of mean like they're baby stalactites. Not that they're young in human years, but they're young in cave years. They're just starting to form. And when they're forming like this, they're actually hollow in the middle, just like a soda straw. So that's why we call them soda straw stalactites. Over time, they're going to get bigger. They're going to take on maybe more of a cone shape that we're used to. They might even clog up in the middle with minerals. But right now, they're hollow just like a soda straw. They're really cool to check out. We'll give you a close-up in just a second. And this is a completely separate cave from Cave of the Mounds. And you need to have three things to be considered a cave. One, you need to be made by nature, which it is. Two, it needs to be made of rock, which it is. And three, it has to fit a human. Now the caveat is they never said how big that human has to be. So as long as you can fit a small child in there, it's technically considered a cave. And you could definitely fit a small child, maybe even two in there. So we like to call this one surprise cave because surprise you actually get to see two caves when you come to Cave of the Mountains, not just one. And these minerals do something really special that I want to show you. But to do this, I'm going to have to turn the lights off. Look at how cool that is! The minerals are literally glowing in the dark. That's because these minerals are fluorescent. Meaning that when you shine a black light on them, they take in that energy from the black light and they get so excited that they just don't know what to do with all this energy. So they give it right back to us in the form of light, which is what we're seeing. So these minerals are fluorescent. Whew, now the lights are back on and we can find our way out. So this is the last stop of our tour today, but I saved the best for last because if you guys look out, this is what we call Dream River. And it's an underground river that goes back almost 300 feet, the length of a football field, to the very end of our cave. And if you look closely at the reflection of the water, it's going to show you the beautiful stalactites on the ceiling that you can't see otherwise. Now, I want to thank you guys for coming out to the cave, even if it was virtually. I hope you guys come out with your families and get to explore this cave for real.